Sorry, there's something on my stopwatch. Hello, uh, I'm Nick. Um, I'm here to talk about the state of the Terry JS library. Um, so I work for CSIRO, which is, the Australia, which is Australia's national science agency. Uh, it's one of the world's largest science and tech organisations. Um, don't really have time to talk about it, but if you want to learn more, you can go to csiro.au. Uh, TerraJS, what is it? Uh, it is an open source framework for web-based ge geospatial catalog explorers. Uh, basically, it's a cesium leaflet-based in-browser tool for looking at 2D and 3D data. Uh, if you want to know more, go to terrier.io. Uh, so, quick history of Terrier for people that don't know about it. Um, kind of the birth of it was the Australian National Map. Uh, it's a geospatial data discovery, visualisation and sharing platform that we did with Geoscience Australia for the federal government, launched in 2014. Currently we've got about 14,000 data sets on there. Uh, we're getting about 30,000 user sessions a month. Um, as far as adoption by the community, quite a wi wide variety of organisations have been using Terry in different ways. Don't really have time to go into the details, but there's a, yeah, there's a few of them. Uh, probably the, the, the biggest thing that we've done recently uh, was this version 8 release where we did a pretty much a total rewrite from JavaScript Knockout JS to TypeScript with Reactor MobX, so much more modern. Um, over the past 12 months, it's become a lot more stable and mature, which is, which is what you want after doing such a large rewrite. Um, so I really want to thank all the contributors, especially to Zoran Kokaza, who's been monumental in, in making this happen. Uh, notable new features. Um, so we added, we finally added Mapbox vector tile support. Took a long time. Uh, using this new library called Proto Maps. Uh, there's a pre presentation about that tomorrow, uh, if you're interested. Uh, we've added a new UI to to allow people to actually edit the the styling of vector data and tabular data uh, using this new library. Uh, we've also added some new 3D data manipulation features, so clipping box, compare, split. I'll show you screenshots to actually demonstrate this. Uh, we've also got a new plugin API, which is quite experimental, but allows much easier ex extendability of Terrier now, whereas before, you know, you were having to fork the code base and, and, and modify it. Uh, so this is an example of the new GeoJSON Mapbox Vector Tile. Uh, library. So this is a 350 megabyte GeoJSON file that I've just dropped into the browser um, showing tree canopies um, in the state of Victoria, Australia. Um, and so you can see that you can kind of change the colour palette. Um, this is a numerical continuous data set, so you could change the minimum, maximum value and, and so on. Um, also have an example of a point-based data set. So this has come from uh, an ArcGIS feature server. So it's pulling in the styling from that server and you can modify the symbology. So here I've changed pedestrian crossings to that little man running thing. Uh, so this has got all the marquee icons in there, so you've got kind of a nice base uh, set of icons that you can use. Uh, 3D data manipulation, thank you. Uh, 3D clipping box allows you to kind of set a box to, I guess, inspect the inside of, of 3D models. Uh, 3D splitter is, this, is similar, but it's using screen space screen coordinate space so you can kind of just split you know a 3D data set in two if you want to compare different data sets. Uh, future plans, um, I don't really have time to go into these but I guess the big one is adding catalog search by location at the moment you can only search through the catalog by text. Uh, upgrade to TypeScript 4 is going to be a big one uh, and always you know improving mobile support is, is a big issue for us and improving documentation. Oh, I have another talk on Friday called Exploring the World's Open Data Portals. It's much more demonstrative than this, so I'm showing how you can use Terrier to connect to different types of open data portals with some of the features that I also demonstrated. Um, I've got some links at the bottom, so if you want to know more, um, yeah, have a look at those.